And finally, the, the, the number one question you guys asked me is about applicability. So in this example, I can show you that there is a real world connection. So I've given you uh, just a very brief example, and I want you to see if you can kind of repeat the pattern on your own example. So if a projectile is sent off with an initial speed, and they gave you the variable they're using, V0, of 350 meters per second and clears a fence 3,000 meters away. The height of the fence is the same height as the initial height of the projectile. If the distance the projectile traveled is given by this formula, find the interval of possible launch angles to clear the fence. Cool. All right. That's a crazy paragraph. So let's break it down. So I'm going to highlight what looks important to me. And that's it. Everything else is kind of extraneous information or maybe relevant to the question, but not necessarily relevant to beginning the question, right? So let's interpret that. V naught, the initial speed, is literally equal to 350 meters per second. So that's something important to write down for myself. D is equal to 3,000 meters. Okay, so again, important to write down. I have a formula for it, and I know that I'm actually finding the angle. So if I take everything away from the crazy word problem, it actually looks a little bit simpler. In fact, it just looks like, hey, couldn't I just plug in some values since I recognize that I have V naught right there and I have distance right there. Hmm, okay, so if I'm looking for theta, wouldn't that be a little bit easier? So I go ahead and plug in what I know. I finish my solve using my order of operations. Now I can deal with that. I divide by the square, or we can go ahead and square and divide it away, however you want to see that. Now I have this. I'm so close to finishing, but I didn't quite get theta by itself. I got two theta, so I do have to finish that solve and divide away the two. But this is not a question that could be done with anything else except a calculator. But the process itself is something you could have done. So if I gave you this question without a calculator, then this might be the expectation, would be 9.8 times 3,000 divided by 350 squared, and you would inverse sign that, and then you would divide by two. And it would be okay to leave your answer like this, okay? Because if you had no calculator, I'm checking, did you know how to do the setup? Did you understand how to do an order of operations and finish the solve for theta? So you're gonna calculate, do it in degrees. I show you one more time how to change that in your TI Inspire. You plug it in and there's the trig button, inverse sign of 0.24. Okay, and then we get this answer, but we have to account for um, we have to account for that two theta. So, if we know that sine inverse sine is restricted between negative pi over two and pi over two, the uh, right hand side of your quadrants then, or negative 90 to 90, since we're talking in degrees, then to find the inverse sine of two pi instead of theta, you actually increase your interval, right? So because it's not just pi or theta, it's, it's gonna be two thetas, so we're gonna increase our interval. And so now we find uh, 13.8865 from that 180 degrees, okay? And so really, our answers would be 13 and 166, or really 13.9 and 166.1, but those would be our two answers. So you wouldn't just take this from 90, you would also take this from 180. All righty. Then you finish your division of two, and those are your two answers. So. Just to, just to tell you what I did in this last step. So we solved this using the calculator, but in order to find the other angle, the co-terminal or the, the sister angle or brother angle, the partner angle, whatever you want to call it, I had to account for this inside the restricted interval, but the restricted interval isn't restricted to just theta, it's restricted to two thetas. So my angle wasn't restricted to 90 and negative 90, it was restricted to 180 and negative 180. So that's all, that's all I did. I know that's a slightly confusing concept. I hope that you just kind of see the pattern there and just accept it as, okay, well, this is just a property of the domain restrictions of my interval because I manipulated the theta itself. Um, you can also kind of look at your double angle identities to see if you see any pattern recognition from there. Okay, so these are my two answers. And because it's a word problem, I'm going to write the answer in a sentence. And I got the sentence from the question itself. The ball will clear the fence if the angle is between 7 degrees and 83.1 degrees.
Cool. This is your question to try, um, but I do have two hints. So here's the question you have. Let's highlight it together. What's the important information? So initial speed, uh, th this, the barricade is 70 meters away. Distance is given by this formula, and I want to know the possible launch angle to clear the barricade. So again, this is V-naught, this is your distance, this is your formula, and you're solving for the angle. So I've helped break it down. Can you finish that question? You will need a calculator. You can use various calculators online. My two recommend, three recommendations are Desmos, Symbolab, and Mathway. But just a quick note, for those of you who really like to use online calculators to do your work for you, my question to you is, who's going to do that question on the exam? And that would be why your exams come back not so happy, but your homework comes back perfect. So when you're using programs like Symbolab, PhotoMath, Mathway, or any of the other online programs you guys use, you need to be using it to recognize the pattern. And then you need to be trying a question on your own or the same question the next day on your own. Because if at no point you're trying it on your own, at no point are you moving towards mastery for the unit exam. All right.